Hello, hello, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and we might as well keep going with these Tyler Perry reviews. <laughs> I love the half thumbs up, I love it, I do. This time I am watching a movie that came out the same year that the last movie that I did came out, uh, Why Did I Get Married? This also came out in 2007, Daddy's Little Girls, produced, written, and directed by Tyler Perry. But thank God it's not starring Tyler Perry, right? I guess... He was too busy acting in the other movie. He decided to take a break. He decided to cast somebody who can actually act in the main role. And because if he had been the main character, if he had made himself the main character, which is what he usually does, this movie would not get the reaction that I'm about to give it right now. I almost cannot believe myself that I'm about to say this about this movie. I did not hate this movie. I did not mind this movie. In fact, I would say this film is decent. It's decent. It's not bad. It's not great because it's still written and directed by Tyler Perry. But you can tell that casting an actor on the caliber of Idris Elba in this main role. Sure, the material is not great, but he's able to make it work. And he's able to be charming and likable and just to stand up all around good dude. So you want to follow this fucking guy. Idris Elba, he plays a father of three girls and he's struggling, right? He's trying to make ends meet. He works at a mechanic shop, but he also gets a second job as a limo driver. Well, not limo, but just the driver in general of this business uh, woman this attorney his daughters are being raised by the grandmother who we get her for one scene and she's coughing her brains out and she literally says i have lung cancer i'm dying i'm not going to be around much longer cut to the next scene of her funeral <laughs> i mean goddamn i guess she wasn't joking she wasn't even exaggerating at all she literally died after one scene so idris elba he takes the girls in uh because i mean he took care of them he still gave them money and whatnot but he just he didn't have a big enough place for them to live because him and the mother big situation there i'll get to that in a minute but when you see how much he's struggling he has two jobs and he's trying to make ends meet the mother his ex is played by Tasha Smith, the same actress that's in Why Did I Get Married? And she was one of the more loud and annoying characters in that film. So what a surprise. She's doing that once again, but she's ten times worse because at least in the other movie, she was loud, she was annoying, and she treated Michael Jai White like shit. But at least deep down, she was a good person, and she changed and became better. This character, there's no hope for this fucking woman at all. She's a horrible human being. She doesn't deserve anything good in life. You see that not only... I mean, dude, it's Aegis Elba. She's acting like Aegis Elba is the biggest bum or the ugliest dude that she's ever dated. She's the one lucky to have ever dated Aegis Elba's character. It's It blew my mind how much she was throwing shade at him like she, like she was embarrassed to ever have been with him. And when you look at her current boyfriend, this thug sort of gangster type guy who's clearly doing illegal stuff on the side and somehow they end up getting the kids back because sure their home life is so much better whenever you have these courtroom scenes of idris elba trying to fight for custody of his kids like why doesn't the judge or anybody like official talk to the kids i know the kids are young but they can easily tell you how fucking bad the situation at their mom's places this is wild how long this is going on for Idris Elba, like I said, he was driving for Gabrielle Union. And Gabrielle Union, at the very beginning, she's so stuck up. She's so annoying. 
just in the sense of like she just doesn't seem like somebody you want to be with or be around, right? She's just uh, doesn't know how to have fun. Until she gets to know Idris Elba a little bit more, you kind of know where that story is going. This is why I say that the writing is not great, because it's super predictable. It's super, you've seen this type of story told a thousand times. And there's a lot of bullshit and a lot of goofy stuff that happens along the way as far as trying to see them fall in love. But the actors are good enough. Gabrielle Union and Idris Elba especially. They're good enough to make it work or at least make you be able to sit there and watch them do this stuff. Now, Gabrielle Union has these two friends. One of them is played by Tracy Ellis Ross, who's a good actress. But it's the other friend. I've seen that actress in a few stuff, like sitcoms and stuff before, but I didn't write her name down. She was the most annoying person because she has this attitude where she makes Gabrielle Union feel like shit because she's dating, as she puts it, the help. She's dating her driver. She's dating a guy who is below her, apparently, in social standings, but fuck off because there was this whole portion where the friends were constantly trying to badger and set Gabrielle Union up on blind dates because they thought she needed to be laid, she needed a man in order to be happy. But every person that they put her on a date with, either he was married or Craig Robinson, who is a buffoon in, in the date that they have. I, I mean, I get that Craig Robinson's funny, and he was amusing to a point but that scene goes on for way too long of him just being overly inappropriate and just not being a realistic person at all especially on a first date it was over the top and it was silly and goofy and i'm like wait so these are the guys you're setting up with but somehow idris elba is worse why are we not pretending like idris elba is like one of the best looking guys fucking ever and everybody's treating like like he's I mean, maybe that would have been the right role for someone like Tyler Perry or somebody else. That <laughs> maybe Tyler Perry casted a, a a guy who's too good looking and too charming and too likable to where I didn't understand how everybody was treating him like this. So overall, I know uh, maybe I didn't sound as complimentary as I was initially thinking going into this because I thought, well, this movie isn't terrible, right? I didn't have a horrible time watching this. I've certainly watched way worse Tyler Perry films, and I probably plan on watching way worse going forward. But this one was tolerable. This one was watchable. I still have my issues. I still have those over-the-top moments that Tyler Perry writes because either people don't really act like that or he takes a situation that could be realistic, but he blows it up to make it look like a soap opera. Not my style, really, if I'm being honest. Let me know in the comments below if you have seen Daddy's Little Girls. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. Spread wide open, light up the floor. The things come fast from here on out. No more delay or benefit of doubt. The prophecies they talk to the sound. I've been waiting patiently to bust.